Okay, so we need to prep our bottom now. And so if you noticed, I didn't explicitly point this out, but my bottom I cut as one piece. Instead of cutting it as two separate pieces and then piecing it together, I cut it as one. So I need to cut out the boxes that will later create the boxed bottom. So I'm gonna do that now. So I need to find the center of this edge here. is here. Same on this side. And then I need to cut out my bottom. This measurement is in the pattern. Oops. First, I guess I'll just draw all over my cork. If you cut, or if you wipe it off quick enough, it doesn't leave a mark. And so using the measurement and the pattern, I just basically marked what the boxes would have been had I, I cut this into two pieces and then I just doubled it on both sides. So I'm just going to cut that out. Had I done this earlier, this little piece could have served as my strap anchors. Two of them at least. Okay, now we need to add our bottom to our panels here. So I'm just gonna take my main exterior front and lay it right side together on the bottom panel. And then I'm gonna go and stitch it. And then I'm gonna flip it up and I'm gonna top stitch it. And then I'm going to repeat the process with this bottom panel. Now this side is a thick, thick baby because not only do we have the two layer or three layers of cork, we also have uh, fabric, we have interfacing, and then we also have deck of the lights. So take your time on this, but I like to fold all of this excess toward the bottom, or not the excess, but the seam rather, toward the bottom, and I'm gonna finger press it really well, and then I'm gonna top stitch that down using a 1 8 seam allowance. And that's what she looks like. And now we're just gonna repeat for this side. And you know what, it kind of, I have a sneaky suspicion I'm about to run out of bobbin thread, so I'm just gonna peek real quick. Oh, no, not even close. Look, the one time I remember to look. I'm fine. Whatever, better safe than sorry, right? Okay, so just line up. Make sure that when you're doing this that your strap anchors are away from where you're sewing. and then just repeat that process. Oh, we got a little bit squirrely here. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna bend toward the base here. And top stitch. Oh, that's not the base. What's going on? Oh. 
So I got a new needle threader. This little guy broke on me forever ago. I don't think I uh, did it correctly because I can't get around this metal bar here to get to the actual threader. So even though I replaced it, I never use it. If anybody has any suggestions, at this point, I'm convinced I had to have done it wrong. But it would be nice to have a needle threader again. I did love it while I had it. As you can tell by the giant glasses on my face, my eyesight is not the best, so threading the needle by hand is kind of hard. main body panel complete. Okay, so I have both of my linings and my completed exterior. And what I'm gonna do is measure out my top zipper length, cut that, because what we're gonna do is now we're gonna create our zipper sandwich, sandwiches, and uh, connect the exteriors to the lining. And the pattern is written for like a closed end zipper to where it has a zipper stop here, but I'm going to do mine like I do my Serona. So I'm going to do like the 90 degree fold situation. So that way it is nice and folded on one edge like so. And then I'm going to do a zipper pull or stop on the other or not stop zipper end cap on the other end so now this because my bottom piece is all one piece this next few steps of creating the zipper sandwiches can be a little bit more challenging because normally you know this would be sliced in half and then you could like zipper sandwich flip zipper sandwich flip and it, it just makes it a lot easier but we will get through it it is not that challenging it's just a little bit different so Let's go. I'm gonna put the lining piece that has the zipper, that's gonna go along the back. So whenever you're looking inside the bag, it'll be on the, along the back side of the bag. So I'm gonna start on the front side of the bag. So I'm gonna get just the regular plain, no, uh, no zipper pocket lining piece. Okay, I'm gonna use some eighth inch tape. I'm gonna go just straight across, right at the very top of the panel. And now, I'm just gonna tighten this up because I got a little wonky there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one half of my zipper, I'm gonna grab it by this top corner here I'm gonna fold it back to where it's the tape is laid on itself like so. And then when you pinch it like that, you'll see that it naturally starts to curve and it folds up toward the teeth here. So that is how I want to lay my zipper, but I grabbed the wrong side. So this is now the left side of my zipper. So I'm just gonna do it with my left hand. So you take it, fold it down to where the zipper is wrong sides together pinch and then fold that pinched little triangle section toward the top of the zipper teeth like so. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape there if that's easier. You can also hit it with um, stitching. You can just sew right there. That'll keep it in place. But a clip also works. It's a little bit hard to do at first to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to get nimble enough to do it. But once you learn the motion of the, the flip, the pinch, if you will, then um, it becomes much easier to do. So I'm going to lay my zipper teeth. I think I'm going to go one inch. So I am going to, I am off the book by now. If you can't tell, I'm not following the pattern. Um, but I'm going to lay my zipper teeth to where that fold 
lines up at one inch and then I'm going to line the raw or the long edge of the zipper tape to the raw edge of my panel. I can't see, so I'm going to turn. You do want this to be straight because it will affect the overall ending look. And then I'm going to create a little area to where my zipper will trail off because I don't want to sew it all the way to the end there. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to do about two inches. I'm just going to put a clip here so that I know that that's where I want it to end, but that's where I want it to trail off. Now I'm going to add another row of tape here. And when I add this second row of tape, what it's going to do is it's going to adhere that little curve that we created, that 90 degree curve, it's gonna adhere that so then it'll stay put whenever I remove that clip. And same thing over here. So now it's taped right out of the way down here. So I'm gonna peel this off. Now I'm going to take my zipper panel and I'm going to line up my edges, creating a zipper sandwich. Here we go. And now because I'm already over here and why not, I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side as well, just so that way when I go over to the machine, I can just stitch both at one time. So the zipper opening or the tail is over on this side. So you just want to make sure that whenever you're folding your zipper tape that you're doing the right side. Or else you're going to have a backward zipper. You're going to have one opening here and one opening there. So again, one inch, I'm going to move this clip to where, so it's on this side. So lay the zipper teeth at one inch and stick her on down. And then again, I'm going to stop at two inches or I'm going to trail my zipper tape off around two inches. Bruzy. Sorry, I did not mean to yell into the camera. I just picked up on the fact that she was like giving herself a bath again. God, that sound. And then she like sulks. It's like, you know, we have an entire bathroom. She loves to hang out in the bathroom. That's, I wish she would do her business in the bathroom. Is that too much to ask? All right, so now we can go to the machine and we could just do two sides at one time. Two birds, one stone. So I will meet you over there. Okay, so I'm just gonna stitch like normal quarter inch seam allowance creating that zipper sandwich.
the pattern actually tells you to flip and top stitch, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go really off the rails. I'm going to top stitch at the very end. Try that. I have not tried that yet on this pattern, but I think it'll work just fine. And I think it'll like create a nicer top corner. Okay, so here we are. I just stitched down both top edges. Um, the pattern tells you to flip the linings and top stitch, but I'm going to renegade from that as well, and I'm going to save that until the very end. I normally do flip and top stitch, but what happens is it creates these little indented corners, which look cute. It's totally fine, but I have not ever tried to wait until the very end. So I'm going to wait until the end and flip through and then top stitch like how I do my Serona. So from here, what I need to do is create the boxed bottom on the lining and then we're going to stitch and sew the bag together. We're almost done. So I'm just going to clip this in place. What I am going to do is I am going to keep this top edge nice and straight when I clip this. So that way I know that at the end, this will be nice and even. The other part that I want to pay attention to is this section right here where my two bottom or where the bottom panels meet. I, I want that to be even as well. This side might be, this side might pose a slight problem. In a perfect world, this would all just meet up really, really nicely. This side's a little off, but it's not too bad, so I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna clip. Well, actually, before I clip, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle my lining in because the pattern when you cut out the pieces it has you just cut the same for the exterior and the lining and i really want to make sure that it fits nice in there it's nice and snug so i'm going to go ahead and angle these edges so if you couldn't tell i, I went probably almost three quarters of an inch in from this bottom corner and i'm just angling up until i get to this top edge here And I'm also going to take about a half inch off the bottom. And that way, now I know that whenever I flip this bag right side out, the lining is going to fit nicely inside the exterior and it won't be saggy or bunchy. Okay, so the pattern um, tells you to cut out the same box size that you do on here, but I'm actually going to go down so... I'm going to make it a quarter inch smaller than what I made these for the same reason because I want this to nest nicely inside of this. And so you can get that measurement from the pattern and then I'm doing it a quarter inch smaller. So now whenever I start sewing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here on the main exterior and I'm going to sew down and then I'm going to do my little thing where I butt the corners together and sew across and then I'm going to leave a big birthing hole along this bottom edge and then I'm going to continue sewing and come back up and around.
I'm gonna do is since I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just pop my corners and stitch them. So I no need to go back and forth right now because we are so close to being done. Okay, so I'm just going to pull as best as possible, pull this out and line up these edges. Because of all this Decoville light, it's pretty uh, stiff. So take your time. Get it right. So something that I forgot to consider when I was cutting and something that shows up whenever you do this step is because I combined both of my bottom pieces I didn't take into account like the extra seam allowance. So that's why this top edge is a quarter inch bigger than this bottom edge here. But I just folded it to where it lays comfortably and then I'm just gonna stitch along this lower line, a quarter inch across that lower line. And then you can see it's doing the same thing over here too, which I don't know why I always forget that that's gonna happen until I get to this step, that it's gonna be a little off. All right. Oh, my hands. But so you really want to work hard at getting a straight line on these corners because otherwise your bag is going to want to tilt one way or the other. And this bag is already top heavy because of the front pocket. So you want to make sure that it's as straight as possible. So I'm just going to pop out my lining boxes here and then I'm just going to stitch everything with a quarter inch seam allowance. Oops. Another way that you can check to see that your bottom corners are even is you can lay them on top of each other and just check your stitch lines. So you can, if you lay them like that, you can just kind of compare where they rest next to each other. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but if you try it, you'll see what I mean. Okay, now we just need to flip this bad boy right side out. And so this is why I left the bigger birthing hole here is because it'll just make it a lot easier to do this next step. But I actually am gonna go trim down some edges.
our sleeves up for this one. I'm gonna roll this top seam between your fingers to get it to sit upright at the top. I like to do that first, and then I find that it's easier to tuck the rest of this in. Then we could just do a quick fit check before you stitch everything up. Just wanna make sure that everything looks good. It feels pretty good. Yeah, see, so there we go. So. It's kind of hard to see because the lighting is so great in here. Just kidding, sarcasm. Um, but it actually fits really well. Ouch, itchy hand. It fits really well. The corners are meeting up nicely. Make sure before you stitch everything up that your corners are poked all the way out. It's really hard once you stitch everything together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we need to close up this bottom birthing hole that we left. And so I'm gonna unzip the pocket and pull the lining up and through here, like so. And then we're just gonna stitch, or clip and stitch to close this hole up and then we'll close up our pocket pocket, our pocket, pocket flip, whatever, pocket birthing hole. There we go. So now, I'm just gonna grab my closest scissors and trim this just a touch. And then we're gonna pull this back through the pocket birthing hole, tuck that in, and then now we can close up this one. Just gives such a nice finished look to the inside and it conceals the exposed stitching inside the pocket. Trim your threads, of course, and then tuck your pocket back in. Actually, it's gonna stay over here because after this, I need to top stitch around the whole, ow, top edge of the bag. So I'm just gonna stay over here and then I'm just gonna finger press this as well as possible and get this Pulled all the way up, get a nice straight edge here. And then we're gonna top stitch this while we're over here. Sorry about the shaky video. You're on a dollar store stand, so I feel like it does pretty good for a dollar store stand. Um, okay, so it looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm just going to prop my machine up. Let's try to get another angle, how about that? I'm gonna prop my machine up and then top stitch around the whole top edge. 
Whoa, if I don't fall out of my chair. So if you don't have a cylinder arm, it's a do-it-yourself cylinder arm machine. I feel like something sticky just got on my hands. Okay, let's go for it. I always start on one of my side seams. I don't know why, it's just habit, I think. I like to add a couple stay stitches over that zipper where it ends, just for again, added stability, always added stability. Jersey, stop, please. Be careful over your side seams if they get thick. Go slow, hand crank if you need to. And there we go. Be right back. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? I was literally less than an inch from finishing. This is where you can start to shape your bag. Make sure your corners on the inside of your little pocket down in there are nice. Let's move back over here. Okay, so we are in the home stretch. We need to add our handles. So grab those, get your rivets, and let's get these bad boys on here. So what I'm gonna do is, so first of all, this rolled edge here. All right, let's finish this bad boy up. First, I'm gonna add my zipper end cap, and then we need to add our handles. And then we need to make a crossbody strap. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a piece of tape for this. Oh, let me put my zipper pull on first. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to do that. Okay, so zipper pull and then tape. Me work for it. Okay, so now piece of double stick tape just right here on this edge. Fold the zipper tape in thirds.
And you're gonna take a cap, slide it on. And now we just need to attach the screw. Just one, there we go. go that boy ain't going anywhere and now we get to attach our handles so this rounded edge that's the edge that you want laying against your bag like that so what I'm going to do though before I even start clipping and getting it prepped to go on here and prep strap the whatever never mind <laughs> I'm going to mark my holes first so that way, once I get them connected to the strap anchors, I don't have to unclip them to do this step. Let's see, should I do two or one? I think I'm just gonna go with, let's see. I guess maybe two. I did one big rivet on the last full size cami that I made and it looks really cool, but I'm sticking, I'll just match. Never mind. You guys are just hearing my thoughts right now. I apologize. Okay, so we've got all of them ready. Go ahead and kind of like dry fit and see how I want these about how far down I need them to lay because whenever you're folding them what I like to make sure is that you're not going to see the folded or the top edge from the outside so you kind of want to fold it and maneuver it around to where you get a nice even fold here on the sides and once you try to do this you'll understand what I mean by even fold because it'll just kind of try to pull up toward that. I don't know. Never mind. I'm sorry. I don't really understand what's happening with words right now, but my descriptors are not good. Okay, so there's the one side. Now I'm just going to mirror it on the other. And so the most important part of this is you want to make sure that whenever you hold the bag by both straps that the straps are even. You know, most people would recommend like, you know, measuring the fold and things like that, but I just go based off feel. Yeah, so it feels even to me. So now I know that I can go ahead and rivet these straps into place. And then so that no shifting happens, I'm going to go ahead and just do them one at a time. Oh. You know, take off each clip one at a time.
So you can kind of see how this one's trying to wrap right now. It's like, I don't know if you can actually sell, tell from way down there, but see how it's not laid inside the, the handle nicely? So I'm just gonna scoot it down and I'll just have to amend the other side on the length before I clip all the way through or punch all the way through. gonna scooch this guy down a touch just so that way the handle lengths match. And then actually before I even start to rivet, I'm gonna go ahead and add my little D-ring rivet on the side here. So I want this part to be towards the back. And then I'm gonna to try to line it up to where the actual the little bracket that holds the D-ring in lines up with the seam on the side. But I am gonna just make a mark so that I know that they're in the same place. Perfect, okay. So then you just put the rivet right through the hole that's on the hardware and then pop it through. You know what? I think I'm actually going to make a little, I'm going to put this in place so that it doesn't, so I don't lose the fabric hole, but I think I'm just going to make a little cork washer to go on the side. Maybe. We'll see how it looks. Since it's so close to the seam, I don't know if it's going to look good. Freehanded that circle. Not too bad. Okay, 
let's see how these look. That's cute. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna poke this side. And now when I'm riveting the, these side D-rings, I wanna make sure that these are straight so that they don't get ratcheted down all cockeyed. See, so I just really like the way that that looks because it's so, like, it's not in your face. I do really, really like the way that the strap connectors look on the original design. It's the same way that I do my Serona strap connectors. I really like the look of them, but I do think that I really like those little tiny Mickey Mouse ears. Okay, so I have spent the last while trying to figure out how I can make this one and a half inch strap go down to one inch strap but still be adjustable and I just couldn't really figure it out um so I borrowed this method from another pattern this is not mine but I don't really necessarily want to give away the pattern because I don't want to make the pattern make her mad um I don't I don't really know anyways okay so this is how I'm gonna have to do it so you can see I kind of came up with this idea and then I was like well how do I actually make it adjustable so if I put this this on here um the problem is that my other thingamajig is still one inch wide which I mean, ultimately, I don't think that that looks terrible, but I'm just not in love with it. So what I'm going to do is I have the length of my strap and I'm going to cut 10 inches off of it. Okay, so 10 inches. And now I'm going to put this side through here. And then I'm going to put this side, oh wait, so I need to make this adjustable part. Wait, let me just finish this side first. Okay, so I put this side through here, just like a rectangle ring. Okay, got it. Now what I want to do is I want to make a little like thingamajig to cover up the, the bottom edge. Because this is woven and it likes to fray. So I'm just going to cut off four and a half inches because I can always go smaller not necessarily wider. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to go three quarter inches wide. So I'm at 
four and a half inches long by three quarter inches wide. And then I just want to wrap a doodle do, and then I'm going to rivet it into place. Okay, so now that I know that that length is going to work, let me just move this down, put that back. I'm going to put some double stick tape on here. my little edges little little details here okay maybe I should put some double stick tape there too Okay, so there's that. And now I'm just kind of overlapping. So you can see the, the webbing ends there and I'm just kind of overlapping the cork piece. I'm just gonna wrap it around and try to keep it as taut as possible. And then it looks like that. And then now I'm going to punch some holes and rivet. Every time I say rivet, I think of a frog. Rivet, rivet. And I mean every single time I say it. You guys remember the old Budweiser commercial with the frogs? I was listening to a podcast and they talked about it. It made me giggle. Hadn't thought about that commercial in a really long time. Okay, so I'm really hoping that this doesn't come undone with use. I've never really used woven webbing before. First time for everything. Okay, so that section done. And then what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to replicate the same thing that I did here, which this isn't done yet because I don't know if I have to take it off. But essentially, what I have is three inches. This is the the excess piece from the bottom that I had talked about earlier. I'm like, oh, I wish I'd use this. So I'm using it now. So that's cool. So I'm just going to put some tape on both of the long edges. And I'm going to fold it in to where it's an inch wide. And then I'm going to snip my little corners. I'm gonna add more tape. Trim this down so it's a nice flat straight edge there. Okay, I'm just gonna fold in half to mark the center. Okay, peel, put my hardware on, and then now I need to wrap around this piece. So, I'm 
like that, I think. Do I need to go down further? I think I need to go down further. I've never said this before, but I just feel like I need to say it again. I apologize if you were expecting super polished, well thought out videos. Um, but what you get from me is realistic, real time, figure things out on the fly videos. And I hope that that's okay. And if not, I guess there are lots of other people that you could be watching, but I hope that you stick around. Chaos is my brand. Okay, so there's that. So now I just need to rivet, rivet, rivet it into place. I'm gonna go for the double rivet, maybe even the quad, because I really don't want this falling out. in so nothing moves around on me. Maybe I should just do one. Yeah, I'm just going to do one right in the center. Looks like a little face. Okay, so there is that section. Looks kind of cool, not gonna lie. Okay, so now we need to make this side um, adjustable. So because I already have this side figured out, I'm just going to try to do it this way where I loop it through and then back through the hard way, some might call it. All right, so now I'm going to put some tape here. Wait a second. I feel like I did something wrong here. Hmm. Hold, please. Okay, I figured it out. I had to um, just take it back through the loop. But what I need to do is I need to connect it. Before I loop it back through here, through the slide, I need to connect it to this piece. So I'm going to pull it through that piece. And then we have to do the confusing pull, push, pull through on this side. Like so. I'm just going to clip it and then we'll test the theory here. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so now what I need to do is just make a little green wrappy do. need more green. And so that was four and a half by 0.75. Okay, can't do math. Four and 
and a half by 0.75. Brandon talking to Sal in the other room. Okay. So because that one was doubled up in there, my four and a half didn't go quite as far. So you might want to extend it by another half inch. But we are just going to lean with it, rock with it. Might have to pull out my big boy rivets for this one. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is rivet this guy down. We're going to make it the same as this over here. So two on top and one on the bottom. Okay, final reveal with the new strap. Okay, so the strap, here it is. Let's break here.
All right, guys, we did it. We made it to the end. I hope that you enjoyed this sew along. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought. And yeah, that's really it. I'm just going to go off and admire this bag. See you guys in a little bit. Also, I don't know what a little bit means. I think I meant next month. So yeah, sound off below. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to see and um, consider joining Patreon. And I hope that you all have a happy Halloween or whatever, or don't. I mean, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. Have a happy day. All right, see you soon. Maybe next month. I don't know. Words.